I was born in time to live through the fortunes of Dario Argento sinking like a stone, critically. Part of getting older is understanding your responses to movies and being able to know when your concerns have finally settled. For instance, as a younger man, I took umbrage with the dubbed performances and absurd logic of the work of Dario Argento. As an older person, I don't give a damn what they're saying or doing, or why. I just want to be romanced by his camera, caressed by the eerie score. I want to be drugged by the sweet violence of his cinema, its madness, its vulgarity, its velvet touch, its utter inhumanity. In my lifetime, his work was rejected, his reputation left in the past. His new movies called a shadow of his former glory. I never bought that. When you're someone as unconcerned with what he called Cartesian plotting, you don't forget how movies are made. You just keep doing things your way, burrowing further and further into your obsessions. The first film about which critics had nothing nice to say was his and screenwriter Gerard Brack's gory outfitting of Gaston LaRue's The Phantom of the Opera. the dozenth or so adaptation, and nobody's favorite. It came at the tail end of an ill-fated attempt to bring the universal horrors into the 90s, and like Keanu Reeves' work in the similarly maligned Bram Stoker's Dracula, I know where the bastard sleeps. I brought him there. To Carfax Abbey. Julian Sands makes for a dreadful phantom. Tonight you will sing. The time has come for you to replace Carlotta. They will get such a surprise at their gala performance. Surprise? Yes. It has something to do with the law of gravity. Mm. The law of mutual attraction. Mm. Will you stay here? I'll come back soon. He's too pretty, although that's on purpose. The point is to mix the gorgeous pleasures in the world with the most disgraceful and grotesque. It does not, however, beg your belief that Sands was raised by rats in a cave here. Sands looking like an abandoned model and being capable of horrifying crimes was one of Argento's and Brack's innovations that set it apart from all other attempts at the story. I understand you're here to steal my treasure. No, but you cannot. Not me. It's Paulette. That bitch. I know you, you a lot, Mr. Phantom. I'm not a phantom. I'm a rat. I'm so sorry. I love animals. Alfred. Doesn't quite work, but it's a choice, and a choice that's endemic to this project, in which every single decision is flagrant. Every grotesque thing here, every newly distasteful, Visualization is very much on purpose. The sets are remarkable, the score is gorgeous, the design of the piece emitting a warped elegance at every turn. There's also just the unbridled joy that comes from watching a man known for torturing people with near-sensual abandon being allowed to redesign one of the most beloved stories in the European canon. <laughs> It's exactly the kind of thing that the free-falling Italian film industry in the 90s could only have produced at this moment in time. Fellini was dead, and so was Fulci. Argento, who had long bridged the gap between them, between the art house and the grindhouse, 
channeled them both in his feature-length seance. This film is extraordinarily strange, and the idea of Argento filming his own daughter performing love scenes with Sands never gets less weird, but part of me thinks, if you're going to do it, go all in. Make a movie that no one else would have dared to. Make it vulgar. Make it irresponsible. Make it strange. Make us feel bad. But whatever you do, make it unforgettable. And Phantom of the Opera is that. To Argento, cinema was never meant to make sense to the head. Just the heart and the stomach. Phantom of the Opera is, on paper, every bad thing they say it is, but it's also unmistakably the work of a singular artist doing precisely what pleases him, like some half-mad architect turning a church into a brothel. To say that the later work of somebody who used to set the world on fire is a disappointment is to say that his instincts failed him. They did not. His instincts had not changed since his heyday. We just stopped being able to suspend our disbelief. We drew a line arbitrarily about what is too much. The days of artists like Argento and his invasive and surgical style of examining our fears and desires is basically over. Our nightmares will never be the same. Mm -hmm.